guys, it's Jess from Stellar Tarot and today I am doing a monthly favorites video. Today my monthly favorites is a little bit different because unlike previous monthly favorites where I was living a normal life, um, March was a bit different for me as I think it was for all of us. So, um, you know, we started having to self-quarantine um, and isolate and kind of social distance to a degree um, about midway through March. So the first week, week and a half of March was fairly normal for us. You know, COVID-19 was spreading here and there, but we were still like, I think only about 200 cases within the country. Um, then midway through March, things really started to heat up in our country and um, the standards for uh, working measures started to get more intense and then essential services were beginning to be determined and um, a economic plan was starting to be implemented by our Prime Minister and all of that kind of stuff. By the time the end of March has run around, we have a few thousand cases in Canada, but when you compare the number of cases that we have and the measures that we're taking with our closest Western country neighbor, which is the United States, uh, we are significantly far fewer cases than they are, and our um, outreach and support measures are very different as well. I think far better than the states, just in terms of how our country is approaching it. And I, I think what it comes down to is that, you know, regardless of what your politics are, I, I think there's a lot left to be desired with how um, President Trump, number 44, has, or 45, or whichever one he is, um, has really, really, really dropped the ball when it came to dealing with um, the coronavirus and its spread and containing things. And he just hasn't been taking it seriously the way that so many other countries in the world are. And um, I think it's a real shame because there are now thousands and thousands and thousands of lives that are being negatively affected by this virus and you know there's going to come a day when he is going to be judged for his actions here and they are not going to be well judged and um i'm i'm horrified and appalled at the conditions for the medical system i think just as so many of you are um, for the United States and my heart goes out to every single one of you my American viewers I, I mean my heart goes out to all of you all over the world no matter where you are currently 151 countries in the world at my last count my last um, update of information were being affected by this virus and so every single one of you watching right now deserves my love and my strength and my compassion no matter where you are in the world no matter the situation that you're in but i especially want to extend my love and my compassion and my strength to my american friends because i know that you are dealing not only with the stress of this virus but also with incapable grossly incapable leadership and i am so sorry I am, I am so sorry. So let's move away from the coronavirus and let's just talk about some things that I have enjoyed. Now I've talked in the past about making these videos possibly a favorites and fails um, when I have fails to talk about for the month. Um, I don't have any fails for this month. I, I just have good things and um, I think it's rather suitable for this video. Um, I, I did read a book that wasn't my favorite, didn't enjoy it, but I wouldn't consider it a fail by any stretch of the imagination. 
Um, I do have a favorite book. I have a couple of favorite decks. I have some crystals and then some couple of other things. And then what I've also been doing this year is showing you when I use up things like incenses and teas, as I have been actively trying to go through my collection um, of those two things and use them up so I can get my collection down to just the bare bones, the things that really mean the most to me and that I really enjoy um, so that I'm not overwhelmed with the amount of, of choices and stuff that I have. So um, I think we're going to start there uh, with the things that I have used up and gotten out of my collection. I have two inc incenses here. One is from Flore. It's a Canadian um, all-natural uh, incense brand. And um, I used up the patchouli incense cones. Um, there were 20 cones in this when I purchased it. And um, I used the last few up uh, the last couple of weeks. And they're very nice. I would consider purchasing them again, but right now I can't purchase anything even if I wanted to. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's a good incense. I enjoyed it. My favorite from them is the Egyptian musk. Um, I still have a bunch of cones from them and I absolutely love that incense. It is my absolute favorite. And um, when I'm able to start shopping for things like that again, um, I'm going to pick up probably another patchouli because that was enjoyable. Uh, the next one that I have is uh, from Leftover Hippies uh, Incense, and this was the Red Sandalwood. This is a very small package of them. I think there was only 10 cones in this. Um, I bought it at a eco market um, in my city a couple of years ago, I think, maybe even longer than that. It took me a long time to go through them because it wasn't my favorite scent. Um, Leftover Hippies Incense is a very good one. It's a like a local, all-natural, handmade incense cone and stick brand. I do enjoy them, um, but I don't always know where to buy from them except through their website. So I probably, like if I saw them at an eco market or like a stand or something like that again, I would consider purchasing from them again, um, but not this particular scent. I also managed to use up the Restful Sleep uh, Tea from Yogi. I would consider purchasing this one again, except I really don't like the taste. Um, it has valerian, chamomile, passion flower, and skull cap in it as the medicinal ingredients, but it also has licorice root really high up the um, ingredients list, and I really hate licorice. It's gross to me anyways. Um, so, you know, if they make a version of this without licorice or if I can find a tea similar to this without licorice in it, I would purchase that instead because this is just not my, it's not my cup of tea. <laughs> um, all right. Let's do uh, books. There's only one book that I want to talk about as being a favorite for this month, and I've been reading it on my Kindle, and that is The um, the Lion of Evermore by Steve Hutton, Stephen Hutton. So this is the third and final book in the trilogy about uh, the Raven Wand Chronicles, and I was introduced to the series when I was gifted by the lovely Manuela, thank you so much, darling, um, the Raven's Wand Oracle a few months ago. When she asked me if there were any decks I had my eye on that she wanted to gift me a couple, um, I had placed that one on my list as a possibility, and she sent it to me, the absolute dear and darling. And um, I had no idea that it was based on a series of books. I just, I had seen images of it and really loved them. I didn't know what the whole theme was. It just, it looked really witchy and kind of a little bit dark and a little bit um, fantasy. And I was like, I wouldn't mind having that in my life. Um, and then she sent it to me and then I was reading through the guidebook and I realized that it was based on a uh, fiction uh, trilogy. And I was like, well, I think I need to read it now because it sounds so good. And it has been, it has been a very enjoyable series. And um, I'm not completely finished The Lion of Evermore yet. I think I'm a little less than halfway through, but it has been really pleasurable. It's been a nice little escape. Every book, they have some sort of big overarching uh, trouble that they have to deal with, as most books do. There's some sort of overarching 
problem or challenge within the plot. Um, but the nice thing is, is that each one has built on um, off of the previous. So you really get um, a lot of perspective and it, it grows, the story develops, and I've really enjoyed that. The second book focused mostly on um, a character who only appeared here and there, um, almost as an antagonist in the first book, and then she ends up being the hero of the second book, and now she is a really amazing kind of supporting heroic character in the third. So I am really enjoying the series. I would recommend it to you, especially if right now if you're having, um, you know, needing some more stuff to read and to um, and to add to your, uh, you know, to help pass the time. So I would recommend it. And you can get them all three on Kindle as well as digital copies, and they're a bit cheaper that way as well. So cheers to that. Um, decks, I only have two that I have really been working with and enjoying this month. The first is one that I purchased um, back at, was it in February? I guess it would have been very at the very beginning of the month. Um, Emily went at the end of February to have uh, a couple of cavities filled and ended up not being able to get through the procedure without freaking out. So we end up having to take her to a pediatric dentist about an hour's drive away. And after the consultation, they were literally right down the street, like a couple blocks away from a really big Chapters or Indigo location. And for those of you who don't know what a Chapters or an Indigo is, basically think um, like big old Barnes and Noble uh, in, from the States. It's a really big chain bookstore here in Canada. And um, I love going to the one in that particular city in Langley um, because it is really well located. Toy Traders is right near it. The Olive Garden is right near it, it right by the Willowbrook Mall. So there's so many good, uh, my husband loves it because Princess Auto is right beside the Toy Traders. Um, there's a really good brewery uh, right like a five minute drive away from there. So it's, um, uh, Trading Post Brewery is really good. So there's like a lot of really wonderful things um, to go to 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 visit uh, around that area. So yeah, Emily and I treated ourselves um, to a book after we got through her consultation. And then uh, last week we got her filling and her cap done there and she did amazingly well. She had to use uh, conscious sedation, but it worked. The kid did amazing. So, um, while I was at the Indigo, I picked up this. This is Yggdrasil, Norse Divination Cards, Reading the Nine Worlds of Norse Mythology. This is by Hoker Halderson and G. Huxdocher. I am so sorry, I have butchered their names. I apologize profusely to my Icelandic and uh, Netherlands viewers and anyone else from the um, you know Scandinavia in general, I do not profess profess to have um, the talent of of uh, pronounce, pronouncing your language accurately or even remotely nicely. <laughs> um, these cards. This is the backs. They're really beautiful on the backs, and they look at a whole bunch of the different characters within the Norse Eddas and the Norse lore. Um, each little symbol here represents a different uh, section within the guidebook and within like the different worlds. And then they have a uh, the name of the card, and then a couple of keywords or um, uh, sometimes more um, to describe the card. It's been really, really nice. Um, the guidebook has been very helpful as well. You get to learn a little bit about each character uh, from the Eddas and the, the mythology through the guidebook, but it's not heavy on the mythology. Um, they are done by a father and daughter duo. So the father is, um, I believe the, um, I believe the father is the, author and his daughter sorry his yes okay so Hawker Halderson and his daughter Gunhildur 
Hawks Dotier are Icelandic artists living and working between Iceland, Denmark, and Germany. Both adhere to heathenry or Asatru, um, as viewed by the Icelandic Asatru community. So for the Yggdrasil deck, uh, father and daughter came together with Halderson's illustrations, their combined interpretations, and Hawk Dotter's words to illuminate the messages of the mythology and folklore. So yeah, mostly it is um, the father's illustrations and then the daughter's words to interpret, but they both, um, they both contribute to the interpretations of the cards. So it's a really great deck. Um, if you have... If you love Asatru, if you love Norse mythology or Norse paganism, I would recommend this deck very much. Um, it also comes in a really nice box. This is a Llewellyn publication, so um, it's kind of falling in with new Llewellyn uh, protocol. Sturdy box, um, good place to put the cards in, a ribbon to keep the, the deck, um, like make it easy to remove it. And then the um, book sits nicely on top, uh, which and the book is called Bifrost uh, as a way to um, bridge the gap between, uh, you know, ignorance about the cards or not understanding the cards and then understanding. So I thought that was a really nice uh, choice for the title and it has a magnetic enclosure. So yeah, this has been a great deck and I would recommend it very much um, if it seems like it would be up your alley. Um, the other deck I've really been diving into a lot this month has been the Herb Crafters Tarot. This is still relatively new to my collection. Um, I've only had it for a few months time, but it has been a very um, influential deck within that period of time. It feels, I was talking about this in um, uh, one of my videos recently, um, about uh, you know decks that surprised me and it surprised me how much I fell in love with this deck because I thought it would be nice but I didn't think it would be this nice and it just feels like you're sitting down at a kitchen witch's table and you're you're being healed physically with the use of the herbs and the teas and all that kind of stuff but you're also feeling like the the emotional support and the emotional healing Every card is this amazing little look into um, an herbalist world or through uh, working with the, the herbs in a really practical way. It feels like really practical wisdom and guidance, but it also has a real um, heavy, uh, um, in, like a really heavy influence from... Uh, like a spiritually healing process as well. Like all of the different herbalism techniques that are listed within the guidebook and suggested for each of the herbs, not only are they practical for healing and for, for using the herb um, in your daily life, but they also have practical suggestions of using the herb or practices that are really um, spiritually healing as well. So if you've had your eye on this deck and you've been thinking about it, I would heavily recommend it. It's just been a really great like kind of daily draw, practical wisdom kind of deck and I'm so glad it's in my collection. Uh, next I will show you the crystals that I have been working with. Um, these have all been kind of under my pillow. I have been putting things like my black tourmaline bracelet on a lot of the days when I go to work just as a way to kind of um, fend off extra negative energy and negativity and anxiety based around COVID-19 and other related issues. Um, but under my pillow each night have been these three crystals uh, that I've really felt drawn to and I'm not even sure I'm ready to let go of all of them either. Some of them may stay for April, at least partly. The first crystal has been um, tree agate, moss agate. I can never remember the difference between the two. Um, this has just felt uh, like it's kind of rooting me into the energies of spring, to the awakening of the earth, and to really reminding myself that, um, you know, even though I'm stuck inside, less connected to the earth right now, I'm still very much connected to what is going on with the earth right now. I can still do some limited gardening. I can still go for walks at my local park as long as I social distance from other park goers. You know, there are other things I'm able to do right now, even though I can't 
be full on out in the world doing what I would normally do at this time. So this has just been really good for kind of rooting me into what is going on in the world um, on a whole, like, you know, really feeling the connection to the earth awakening and greening and the just coming back to life. Um, the other two crystals have been more to connect me with uh, like my intuition to keeping myself um keeping my intuition clear and keeping my uh connection to spirit clear and um all that kind of similar stuff so there's selenite one of my favorite crystals of all time and then celestite um I may change up my crystals in the next week or so. I don't really know. Right now, though, they're going straight back under my pillow after this video. The other thing crystal-wise that I've kind of been using has been this handmade mala strand that I got at um, a women's expo that I worked at uh, the last day of February and the first day of March. Um, our one of our pharmacies one of the two that i work for puts up a, a booth at the women's expo every year so that we can show people like the automatic dispensing machines that we do the blister packing services we also are a compounding pharmacy so we are showing off um, our compounder was there and he was showing off some of his compounding skills and stuff like that and we're just letting the community know that we're here that we provide a lot of community support and services like daily dispensing for um, patients who are in their homes or the automatic pill dispensers for people who want that independence still and want to remain at home for a while still so um, yeah we I worked at that uh, expo and then I also got a chance to kind of walk around and look at things and this was one of the things I spotted on the Saturday and I loved it and I wanted one so bad and I talked to my husband and he was like go for it so I got it on the Sunday um, it's handmade it's beautifully done very good quality and um, I absolutely am enamored with this particular mala. Um, it's got some uh, like Indian green agate, uh, looks like a variety of, or um, agate and jasper, I should say. And uh, it's got uh, a lava bead here at the bottom so that you can um, put some essential oil on it and, you know, hold it up to your nose every once in a while and get a sniff. And speaking of oil, this is an oil blend that I made. I do not even know how long ago. I don't remember what's in this. <laughs> I'm trying to load up the, uh, the bead here. I don't remember what I used in it. I can definitely tell that there is um, some bergamot in here and maybe some like cinnamon or something spicy anyways I have been absolutely loving this particular oil blend this month I've been wearing it almost like a perfume and then inhaling it as needed uh, to get me through anxious moments so yeah um, oils have just been really helpful for me this month for kind of calming down and grounding and getting back into my body and you know not giving into the desire to move into full-blown anxiety <laughs> which I'm sure a lot of us are feeling the temptation to move in towards <laughs> right now so that is it for my monthly favorites um, I would mention like TV and stuff but really I've just been watching the same types of stuff that I usually do um, when I'm stuck inside more. So I've been watching YouTube videos, I've been watching history documentaries, um, I've been watching, re-watching the Viking series, I've been just watching anything that really strikes my fancy. Uh, Survivor is on right now, it's the winter at war season, and I am really enjoying that and I've been watching the new season of Drag Race because that is the ultimate in empowering distractions right there. Um, my favorite drag racer was eliminated last Friday. I am so devastated so I'm hoping that she comes back for an all-stars series at some point in the future because I feel like she was eliminated way too early and that there are a couple of her other competitors, maybe 
could have been eliminated earlier because I don't feel like they are as strong in a lot of ways, but that's my own personal opinion. It's Mama Roo who gets to make all the decisions, so all I can do is watch. Um, Thank you guys so much for watching today. Let me know what your favorites have been over the last month. I am genuinely interested to know what are you watching? What decks are you working with? What books are you reading? What crystals have you been working with? Have you been drawn towards any particular spell work or type of practice? Have you been changing up your altar? Have you been gardening? Let me know. I want to know. And until next time, guys, be wise be brave, be magical, be safe, be healthy, and be kind to one another. Bye.